Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a journal entry in my watercolor journal. So if you've seen any of my other videos or if you haven't, uh, I have a watercolor journal that I use for daily practice. And so what I like to do is just kind of sketch something from my day that stands out to me or something I encountered or just something that makes a little memory of my day. I try to make this a daily practice. I haven't been doing very good at that lately. I've uh, found it really hard to be creative during this isolation period and I don't know about anyone else. I've, I've seen some artists talk about this and so I feel like I'm starting to get back into um, doing more creative things and which is nice like filming this video for instance. So hopefully I'm overcoming that uh, but I just wanted to share the process of making this entry. This one's really fun. So for Christmas um, we got a lot of chocolate as I'm sure lots of people do. Lots of candy. Too much probably. And I, one of the candies that we always get, it's a tradition in our family, is to give each other turtles. These have been, um, through my, like, in my family forever, we always give turtles at Christmas. And so I ended up with a few boxes of turtles. And one day I was trying to finish them and I thought, man, I just got to draw this turtle because I just see these too much today. And so that's kind of what I did. So what I like to do is sketch it out first. So here's my sketch. Usually what I'll do is either I'll sit down at my art desk and take the object with me. Um, or if I'm out and about and maybe I'm like um, out of the house during that day and it's something I see outside that I want to sketch, I just take a quick picture with my iPhone and then I sketch the picture later. So with this, I actually had the turtle with me. I saved one, didn't eat it until I got to sketch it. So this is kind of the process that I start with. So I sketch it out with pencil first. I like to use, um, they are called, actually, I'm having a total brain block here, the Faber-Castell pencil. So I usually use like a 2B lead is my favorite. Uh, it's a little bit softer. And so once I sketch that out, then I paint right over top of that with watercolor. So the book I'm using here is the Pentallic book. And I don't believe they make these anymore. I've been trying to source them and I just can't find anything about this company. And they're great. Like I just love the papers in their sketchbooks. They're reworkable and they're very affordable too. And I just love the size and the format. And this one has a hardcover, which I like as well, um, which is unfortunate. I just can't find any more. Um, but anyways, that's what I'm using here. I'm still on the search for a replacement for my Pentallic. And I have been trying some Strathmore and I've heard good things about Canson as well. Just trying to find something that's easy to source, which has been difficult. We don't have um, ab an abundance of art stores where I live, so it is kind of challenging. So anyways, back to the painting here. So what I started to do is lay down kind of the shadow shapes first. Uh, normally what I like to do is do a light wash of color over each area. But I started doing just the shadows with the white. So in the white area, those shadows are kind of a purpley. I like to use cooler colors for shadows. And then the oranges, I put down the, the darker shadows first for the oranges and then came back and did another wash over top of them. Now I'm doing the main logo or word mark area and just painting this in with kind of a reddish brown color. Um, and this one I did just kind of do a wash first, like a light wash, and then build up those shadows. The thing with doing watercolor, it's really challenging, but because it's fluid and it's constantly moving and you really don't know what you're getting until it's dry. I love the output though that you get at the end. It's kind of a surprise. I think the reason why I'm most attracted to watercolor is it was the hardest medium for me to grasp or kind of understand. And uh, I think I just really enjoyed the challenge. And I feel like I'm still learning, but I just love it so much. So I find that building up a few layers is the best way for me. I mostly do um, wet on dry. Sometimes I'll put down a water layer first if I want more of a soft, um, out of focus look. But most of the time I just do wet on dry. So now with the letter shapes, I'm just going in and adding the shadows. There's also a drop shadow under the text that helps elevate the title. This is more of a design um, element on the design of the package. But I do want to make sure that that's captured as well. Now, being a graphic designer, my favorite part of doing drawings like this is doing the logos or the word marks, the type in the in the objects. This is kind of my jam, so I get really excited when I get to draw logos and stuff. So now I'm going to go and do the background, just kind of the drop shadow. I was just looking to see what colors I thought would work best there. 
I used to, when I started, I would always do like a gray drop shadow that's just typical and common that you would expect. Uh, but I seen someone post once an artist and they were using teal and it looked so pretty and they were just like, why not? Why not use teal as a, as a drop shadow color? And I thought that was really cool. I've never considered using um, an out-of-the-box color before, but I just love how it elevates and adds a little bit of color and punch to the overall look. And this gave me a chance to let the main part of the image dry while I did the, the drop shadow. I'm coming in now to work more on the logo area. Working on the red here. One thing I find with watercolors that I'm not quite satisfied with yet is the reds that I have in my palette. So to achieve this red, I've done a combination of the reds that I have. I'm just gonna pull out and get the names of those colors so I can tell you what they are. The red that I have is Permanent Alizarin Crimson, and then I've mixed a little bit of Quinacridone Magenta from Core. Uh, the Alizarin Crimson is from Winsor & Newton, the professional brand. And so just adding a little bit of that Quinacridone Magenta to make it a little bit more of a richer red, more of a cherry red almost. I find that the Permanent Alizarin Crimson it has a nice red when it's wet, but as soon as it dries, it seems to just dull a little bit, and I just can't find a good, deep, bright red. So I'm still on the hunt, but if you have a suggestion, uh, please leave it in the comments below. I'd be curious to try out some other colors. I seem to I'll be on an endless search for a good red. The main part of my image is pretty dry now, that first few layers that I've added. So I'm going to come back in and add some more of the drop shadows or the shadows in general. So just on the piece, I want to make the shadow areas a little bit darker, just building up the color layer by layer. And that's what I love about this pentallic paper is that you can keep layering and it doesn't really affect the, the construction of the paper. It doesn't break down. And I'm finding that right now I'm using a Strathmore watercolor journal and I find that I can only rewet it a few times. It's kind of frustrating, but this paper is great for working layers, multi layers. I want to add some gold here. I'm using my Fine Tech paints. I'll put a link in the description below if you're curious about those. These are more of an opaque paint, so they're nice to add as an accent, but you do have to be cautious when you put them down uh, because they don't have a lot of transparency to them. And so for this instant, I'm doing the gold embellishments. And on the Turtles package, there actually is a gold Pantone. So it was perfect to use these paints for that. So I just did the small little accent details that were gold and so the fine lines and then kind of the few design trim lines that they use in the in the wordmark design as well. And it's nice when you have the final piece because you can see the gold. It shows up really well once it's dry. It's very opaque like I mentioned so it holds up very well and when you see it in real life it looks just amazing. It's so cool. And so I like to add little shimmery bits um, and color droplets of different um, metallics whenever I can because it just adds such a nice effect to the, the overall piece. This is my favorite part. Now I get to use my um, pen, my uh, fountain pen. So I'm using a waterproof ink. This is uh, Sketch Ink by Rower, Rower and Klingner, I believe it's pronounced. And I'll put a link in the description below for that as well. This ink is really nice to use with watercolor because it dries very quickly. So I found that when I was trying um, uh, Noodler's ink, Noodler's black ink I tried before, it would take forever to dry. And so this one I really like. It's fast drying and it has a nice rich black, which is exactly what I want for my outlines. And the only thing though is that it does get stuck in my pens. If you don't use your pens on a regular basis, they kind of get clogged with this ink, so I have to keep them moving, but dipping them in a little water um, helps to reactivate the ink if it gets stuck in the nib, which is nice. So they're not terrible, but you do have to be very cautious because these pens aren't really designed for waterproof ink. Uh, they're made more to be writing pens, but with watercolor, you really need a waterproof ink for it to work. And the pen itself, I'm using Lamy pens here, and I love Lamy pens. The one I'm using is from the Safari collection, and this was a limited edition that came out last year, and it was the pink one. I also got a mint green one. Uh, they were my first pens that I've ever had from Lamy, and I have a couple more since then. I was really reluctant to use Lamy in the beginning. I saw a lot of artists using them, and I just, 
I don't know why I was so reluctant. I think just because everyone was using them and I didn't just want to follow the herd, but I, I, I can't even, I don't even know why I started using Lamy. Our local art store had them and then I became intrigued. And the minute I actually held it in my hand, it feels so comfortable and it writes so nice and it doesn't bleed at the bottom. Like if you're uh, finger just the positioning of your hand like it doesn't allow you to touch the part where the ink comes down and it's just intelligently designed very ergonomic and it's very comfortable and I love Lamy pens so if you haven't tried them you should check them out because they're really nice I like to use the medium nib uh, I also have one that has a large nib and I like those for larger pieces so I can get broader strokes uh, in my art with that larger nib which I have been using quite a bit of lately but this one here is using the medium nib and you can also switch out the nibs too so the uh, barrel or the base of the pen doesn't have to change if you want to change the size of the nib that you're using and as I mentioned this is my favorite part of the drawing just doing the lines I love line art I love doing fine lines and I, I just find that this makes the piece feel polished when I get to get in there and start putting down these black container lines just outlining and giving a little bit of dimension to the overall piece. I try not to outline the entire thing solid, just mostly accenting the darker areas where the shadows would be, putting the bolder lines there. And then as I get to the highlight points so of the parts where there might be more light reflecting off the object, then I try to lighten up the outlines in those spots. I also have a gel pen, so I'm doing the white lettering, but I find that the gel pen is a little bit tricky to use. It doesn't always have like a fluid line of, um, of ink or liquid coming out. I would like to try some designer's gouache as well. I haven't got some. I used to have some when I was in college and it's long since dried up. So I do need to buy some more. So I have everything done. I'm really excited with how this turned out. It just, it's pretty simple, but I just, I love turtles. So it's <laughs> just like the song says. So this was really fun to draw. I really enjoyed this piece. If you're interested, I do have this available as a sticker in my Etsy shop. So you can check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos to my channel. Thanks so much for watching.